I want to talk to you about something that is dear to my heart. And uh, I would leave it up to you to determine whether this message constitutes a conditional announcement or an unconditional decree. I know one thing, it emphasizes that God sometimes gives people an opportunity to repent when they hear an announcement of judgment. But I'm also reminded that just as Amos and Isaiah learn, if a people who is under judgment refuses to repent over a period of time, it wears out the patience of God. So in many cases, uh, I, I understand that it's very difficult to determine initially whether or not a prophetic message of coming judgment is conditional or unconditional. And it explained uh, the uncertainty that some people have. I first want to share something that I think is relevant. Many years ago, I uh, have been spiritual all my life, though. And at one period of time in the world, the world was full of much evil in a different form. And people were just running around doing some of everything. There was a lot of drugs out, and people were making a lot of money, and there was a lot of stuff going on, sexual immorality. And I got somewhat fed up. And I asked God, I, you know, to take me home, though, just beam me up, though. And I had never known that there were two people in the Bible, with the exception of Jesus, that ascended to heaven without dying. I didn't know that because I had not read the Bible. As a matter of fact, during that period of time, I had professed to be a Muslim and vowed to never be a Christian. And so God spoke to me and said that he would save me for the latter days. Hang on. I'll send you with the warriors. And when I, I send you, they'll know it's me. And this was very comforting to me. It was like manna. And I was full. And nothing could penetrate this comfort that I felt. I felt, I felt this overwhelming sense of security maybe in the secret place I was, because I had something I could hang on to. And, and so years passed, and, and then I joined the military, and I started having really demonic nightmares. They were unbelievable. I mean, the, 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 the devil, the, these demonic spirits uh, just chased me relentlessly just every single night. Though I just dreaded going to sleep. So I indulged in dr drugs and alcohol, and, and I thought that that would ease the, the uh, nightmares, but it didn't. And so I finally... Uh, told the military that I was having these nightmares. They did some diagnosis, and they determined that I needed to get on this medication. They wanted to give me some medication to cease the, uh, the nightmares. And so I consulted with God, and God spoke to me again and said that it was not a medical condition that I was experiencing, but in fact, it was spiritual, it was spiritual warfare. And I trusted God, though, because I have seen so many things throughout my life that God had shown me. I remember when people used to come to me, people that were deceased, I would see them and I would talk to them. And so I did decline to take the medication. And some years passed. And then one day it was over with. And God told me that they would never bother me again. I would never have to deal with them. Later on, I found out that there were two other people in my family who experienced the exact 
exact same thing. The exact same thing. And so those kind of things make me believe. They, they, they just reaffirm my belief in, in God. And so later on, God touched me on the shoulders and told me to meet his son at the cross. And I mind you, I had uh, vowed to never be a Christian. And I knew what he meant when he said, meet his son at the cross, and I met Jesus at the cross. And God reminded me, he said, you remember when you were having those nightmares? I said, yeah. He said, I had you laboring with the enemy so that you would always know him. And then it made sense. Because I, even when I came to Christianity, I could, I could see the demonic spirits sometimes sitting up in church, sitting up with people. I thought I was seeing things. I, I would drive down the streets and I could see demonic spirits. And sometime, I, one time I had a, an encounter and I had someone with me, I had my wife with me. And uh, we both witnessed this though. A demonic spirit uh, jumped right in front of the car and laughed at us. And I thought I hit it. And I did hit it because we heard the noise and there were people that, it was at nighttime, people came out because they, they saw it and heard it. And we could not find this, 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 the spirit, whatever I hit, we couldn't find it. We knew what it was because we, we looked at eye, eye to eye. And it was a, just a lot of demonic activity going on then. It, it was a lot of things going on. And so we knew what we had seen because we could feel it in our spirit. And so this brings me to something that I'm deeply concerned about, and it is the, the current condition where Satan is permeating the earth. He's interfering in, in families, with families and, and, and politics and, and uh, uh, you know, he's got people, you know, killing kids in school and killed in el killing elderly people and, and, and just, you know, killing babies. Every time you look up, there's just murder that you've never even heard of. And some of them are not mentally ill because Satan has permeated their heart. And then you have people that want to spread hate because they have Satan's DNA in them. That's right. That's what God told me. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter what goes on, they oppose Christ. Anything related to Christ, they oppose. And so they're starting to gather up some other people, some good people, some of them are Christians. They're trying to gather them up. And, and the reason why they that this demonic spirit is able to gather these people, to usher these people in, is because they have legitimate concerns. They're worried about the depletion of their savings and Social Security and the plight of the country, United States, and they have legitimate concerns. They're very legitimate. I stand with you on them. But the way you're going about doing this demonic, it's the wrong way. You can't see because Satan has you blind. But any time that you have evil in you like that, though, you know, hatred is evil. You want to oppress a people, a race, a religion. That's evil. God doesn't stand with you on that. You may have a legitimate issue that got you to that point, but it's the way you're going about doing it. You can't justify it. If you could show me in the Bible, God fearing people, anything that will support your behavior of, of hate, then I'll stand with you. I'll stand with you. If God allows us to hate people because of their color or because of their religion, then I'll stand with you. But you can't find it because God is a social justice God. God, God, God so loved the world, not just Christians, that he gave his only begotten son that whoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He gave that to the world. That's 
That's right. And so you can't convince me that what you're doing is this hate mongering and, and pitting race against race and and, 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 and just discriminating and, and, and want to kill people. You want to actually murder people. You can't convince me that that's part of God. And the reason why I talk about this, because some of you guys are God-fearing people. I could look at you and tell. I, I watch. I watch you on TV, and I've seen you in the stores. And, and, and by the way, the funniest thing about all of this, you have legitimate concerns about, your, about the things that, that uh, affect you today, you know, your, your, your uh, income and lack of jobs, and you think the country is going to hell, and, you know, but you... You're responsible for this. A lot of you, a lot of you who are, 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 are ranting and, 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 and crying and, and, and complaining right now, you're responsible. You didn't say anything when your boy was in there, the person that you selected, or the, 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 the persons, you know, over the years that you have selected when, you, when, when, they, when they suited your need, it was okay. But soon as someone gets in the presidency that you don't like, then the country's going to hell. But where were you, though, when the country was going to hell? The country doesn't go to hell just overnight. This has been going on for many, many years, but I heard not a voice. Not a voice, not from the ones who are ranting now. Not a voice. But now, all of a sudden, you want to rise up and create an authoritarian government in, in, in America. The one Now, you've been all over the world trying to spread democracy. And now you're thinking about having an authoritarian uh, government here in America, which will never happen. But I want to talk to the crybabies, the ones who, who, who pout and well, they never seem to be pleased and stuff. They pouted and cried about affirmative action. They gave him a pass to fire and they quit crying for a while. Oh, they start whining again about welfare. Didn't even know what they were talking about, but they whined. And you received another pass to fire. Now you're whining again. They're just, just forever whining and witting in your pants and stuff, just crying, though, just think the world owes you something and think you rule the world. Every, rule the world. Everything has to fit your needs. And I'm understanding, I, I, I'm understanding some of the things that you're concerned about, but I want to know who, when did the Jesus die and leave you king? That's what I don't get. I don't understand where you get this authority from because my understanding is God made everyone intrinsically valuable. Or they, have, they have intrinsic value and intrinsic worth. That means that every single person, I don't care whether you're a prostitute or, or murderer or a, a drug pusher, you are important to God. God loves you. He doesn't love you because of what you have done and what you didn't do, we love you because who you are. You are his creation. So everyone is equal. But there are people around the world, and especially in this country, that think that they're better than other people. And they want to dominate the world. They want not just this country, the people in the country, the people that they don't like. They want to dominate the world. And I'm telling you right now, that it'll never happen. And so, take an inventory of yourself and weigh your ideology and your theology and stuff against the Bible if you're God-fearing. See, this voice here, this prophetic message, it's not for the non-believers and, and, and Satan cohorts. It's not for them because you don't hear this voice here doesn't resonate. You only hear from Satan. But I'm talking about these good people that have been duped by Satan because they had a legitimate concern. 
and then you, Satan, interfered with their concerns and, 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 and gave them a, an avenue rather than them seeking God, you showed them another way that they could get to this by hating and taking and oppressing people. And so I'm saying to the good Christian people, though, check yourself, please. It's not worth it. You already know God. You know God, look, if you've been wrong, God will avenge that wrong. You know that. Don't listen to Satan. Satan wants to mark you now because I believe that we're in the time right now what God has told me that it's preparing, it's making preparation for the Antichrist. Now, let me tell you something. I want you to think about this carefully. Just, just, just listen to me. If this one person who is trying to spread hate around the world right now and want to, want to assume the, the highest office in the world can duke you with this little baby stuff, with a whole bunch of lies and everything, if he could duke you, what will the Antichrist do? You're going to be marked, I'm telling you. You think it's a joke. You've been looking up in the sky for some activity. But it's right down here. It's happening as we speak. And you need to really check yourself, though, because I believe that some of you guys would, if you really, if you would just speak to God and, and just hear it from God, not from me. I'm just a servant. If you would hear from God, I, I don't believe that you would act like that and that you would go that route that path, down that path. I really don't believe you would. You guys have invested your whole life in God. And we're in some dire times now where Satan knows that he's at his end. He's at wit's end and he's doing everything. He's cunning, just like he was in the Garden of Eden. And he duped you to, 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 to perpetuate this evil and this hate and stuff around the world and in this country and stuff. You know, you go around to other countries, though, America. America goes around to other countries in the world and tell them about democracy and and then they tell them about oppressing their women and, and their people. But what are you doing here? You're oppressing your people, America. You said that one nation under God. Not true. You said, in God we trust, but that's not true. But you can get back to that, though. You, you, just, you, you just need to you need to seek the face of God. You need to seek the face of God. And let me just touch on this last thing, though. Some years ago, up until just recently, boy, you heard loudly the voice of the Christian conservative e evangelical. And by the way, I found out during my studies that I was an evangelical. Oh, you heard them. They were loud. They talked about prosperity. And it was okay. It's okay to me. It's, you know. But as soon as this evilness just raised this ugly head, you've said not a word, not a single word. Can't, can't even find you. Don't even know where you're at. You're silent. And so I'm asking you to come out from your hiding places and tell the world about what Christ is and what he has said. Stand up against this evil that is trying to permeate throughout the earth. Stand up. Don't be afraid. God is with you. And one last thing, there's some pastors, some cowards, and these are pastors of some of these evil people who are trying to permeate this, this earth with evil, with, with you know, trying to, trying to spread hate throughout this world and starting here in America, you've been doing it for some time, just plain evil, got Satan DNA. And you go to church, you profess to be a born-again Christian or evangelical. And you have a pastor. They're cowards. Because they know that you're evil and that you're wrong and that this hate that you're trying to spread around is wrong. God has spoken to them. He told me he's spoken to them. But they're afraid to say something to you because you may 
withdraw your tithes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just cowards. That's all they are. Oh, they get in front of the pulpit and they talk real good and you, you, you know, you're happy for your Sunday. And then Monday you hate mongering. And your pastor seen you. He's heard you. He know what your thoughts are. Plain cowards. And you shall see the hand of God. And so my last plea, though, is please consider this, though. This is a remedy. Because God loves us so much. And God says in Second Chronicle 7.14, that my people who are called by my name, if they'd humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land, America. God bless you.